This mod turns Bannerlord into a whole different game. You can build a home, own a tavern, have a farm, and so much more. I'm starting as a nobody, with no money and no food. I have to work, save up some money, and go from a lonely peasant to a successful businessman. I won't be able to use weapons or fight in any way. If I'm not careful, I could lose everything. My final objective is to own multiple businesses and buy my own palace. So, here we go. I spent a hundred days as a peasant in Bannerlord. Day 1. I walk through the lands alone, with nothing but a single coin in my pocket, looking for a place to work. I travel for hours on end. I was going to die of starvation soon, until I saw something in the distance. The place was going through hard times. Brush were reclaiming the outer fields. Not many people were there. I talked with a couple of them. So who are you then? They were going about their business, not much interested in talking. I didn't have enough money to ask for a place to mine or do some wood cutting. I'd need to start from the bottom. That meant doing honest manual work, help with whatever was needed. After eight full hours of work, I received my first payment, 32 coins, plus a couple points in athletics. On top of that, my relation with the locals improved. Now I was able to buy something to eat and at least not starve to death. I wasn't dead, but what I wanted was to live, grow and thrive. To do so, I'd take my first steps into the world of trading, supply and demand. I went around talking to people, putting my ear up and checking the prices. Each town told a different story altogether. Something that was common here was going to be cherished somewhere else. My goal was to find what that was and take advantage of it. To have a better picture, I needed more information. The key was not only what to buy, but where to buy it from. Buy low and sell high. That meant visiting other major towns. The closest one was Lagetta. This would be a risky process, especially with no horses or men at my side, but I needed to start somewhere. Before leaving, I spent some time in the tavern, winding down and preparing for the long trip ahead. I played some board games with the locals, but if you're interested in real games, you can win a gaming console for free if you click my link in the description, download Raid Shadow Legends and head to summertavern.plarium.com to enter your Raid ID and join the competition. They will also be giving away a smartphone, Amazon gift cards with a total value of $5,000 and other in-game prices, including rare, epic and legendary champions like Molly Tankard, Lord Drizar and more. On top of this, you can win a free 2-month trial subscription to YouTube Premium. Just download Raid before July 17th, play for at least 5 days and hit level 20 within 30 days. Be sure to click my link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get a huge starter pack with an epic champion Tyrell from the High Elves faction, who has a really powerful debuff combination, easily one of my favorite every champions. After reaching level 25, you'll get another pack that includes an epic Rector Drath. All of these are available only via my link or QR code only. If you go to an app store, you won't get this. So come find me under the name Adian Shadow. Join my clan, the Undead Slayers, and we'll be legends together. So remember, click my link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. It was a long trip there, especially by foot. On the way, I stopped at a small village called Garangolia, looking for some more work. The villagers busily attended their different tasks. Animals and people looked well fed, working the fields. Quite a beautiful place, peaceful life. Hey, so who are you then? I managed to get another job, spending another eight hours working. This time, I got 72 coins as payment, alongside a new skill point in charm and athletics. Continuing my trip, I arrived at the next big town. I walked through the streets, visited the markets, Learn the local prices, the people. 
The beer was abundant, had a really good price, could get a big profit if I managed to sell it at Gujas, but I couldn't even afford a single barrel yet. I had to start small, so I bought some wool. If the rumors were right, I could get a net profit of 126 coins just by selling one single unit. That was more than I could make in a full day of work, but things weren't that simple. The problem now was going from this town all the way to Gujas. Not only would it take me a long time, but it would put me at risk. Being alone, I was vulnerable to looters. No matter, I decided to risk it. Everything seemed to be going fine until I had to cross the bridge. Barely, I was able to escape and take refuge in town. It was crucial for me to get a horse before anything else, but I still wasn't able to afford it. That would be my main priority. I waited for a while until the looters went away and resumed my journey to Gujas. Maybe if I made this, I would be able to afford a new horse. On the way, I stopped by Garangolia to work, couldn't waste a single day, had to do anything I could to earn some money. After days of traveling, I finally arrived at Kujas. Unfortunately, prices have changed. It was still profitable, but nowhere near what I expected. The economy fluctuated. If I had to take that long to go from one place to another, there was risk. On top of that, everything was based on rumors. There were a lot of moving parts in this, supply and demand. But this was part of the learning process. With the money that I gathered, I was ready to buy my own horse. This changed things. It would let me travel faster, improving my efficiency, and giving me a better chance at avoiding the looters. For now, I would try to only buy and sell goods from adjacent towns, to be sure to cash on that profit, trying to minimize the risks. The next thing to buy was a saddle, since not having one gave me a speed penalty. So I looked for the next product to buy, and that was flax. It had a low price, and I could sell it close by. With my new horse and new goods to sell, I started making my ways to Ortizia, I was confident. Maybe too confident. Today is not your lucky day, friend. How about you hand over your silver? Be a real shame to have to cut anyone's throat. I was intercepted by looters. I got distracted. I couldn't fight, and I didn't have enough money to pay them off. They imprisoned me and took everything I had. For days, I traveled with them, with no option but to wait patiently for the right opportunity to escape. With no money and no goods to sell, I was back at square one. I looked for a job to do. I worked for hours. And then, I didn't even get paid. This village was doing so bad that they couldn't afford to pay me. Back at the other village, I worked for another 8 hours. Thankfully, this time I got paid. With this, I bought some salt, which I managed to sell at Gujaz for a small profit. Finally. Following this, I bought some hardwood and brought it to Ortizia. But then again, prices had changed. I was going to lose money if I sold it. So I decided to hold on to it for now. Meanwhile, I found some food at a good price. But I was going to exceed my carry weight. And that would slow me down, making me a sitting duck for the looters. I decided to wait a few days to see if I could sell the hardwood for a better price. In the meantime, I went to work at the nearby village. Got 56 coins for the day. Coming back to town, no change. Did the same thing one more day and nothing. I decided to cut my losses, sell the wood and try again with another product. In this stage, having so little money was really limiting. A sudden price change like this could ruin all my progress. It was a matter of choosing wisely and having some good luck on my side. The trading continued. First, I bought a couple units of clay and some wool. Got 
got a good price with the first ones, but lost money with the last one. With more money in my hands, I bought a set of tools for around 200 coins. I managed to sell it in Orticia, but not a lot of profit though. Next, I got some wine. This one had a really big margin, almost doubling in price. Fortunately, I made it sold two units. Following this, got some oil. Sold a couple units and beat my record once again. I now had 1400 coins. With more money in my possession, more options and pathways were opening to me. Jewelry was high risk, high reward. Bought a set for almost 700 and also some linen. Another win, 2,000 coins. Having all of this at my disposal, carry capacity was beginning to be my bottleneck. If I had more space, I could trade a wide variety of products. And so, I got a mule, and that was a game changer. I bought all the oil I could carry. After selling it, I beat my record once again by almost double the amount. Things were growing exponentially. I got another mule, more capacity, bought a big batch of goods, paid a lot of money for it. It was a risky move and on my way to selling it, looters. I hid in a village. After all, I managed to sell the goods. Prices had changed, didn't get a lot out of it, but I was safe. Having made all this money, it was time to look around for properties, to buy a home for myself. First, I checked the available houses in Orticia. They were pretty expensive, 8,000 coins and up. In any case, that wasn't what I was looking for right now, the life in the city. No, I was looking for land, land that I could work, grow, and live off from. A town like this didn't have that. So I left to visit the nearby villages the next few days. bandits roamed around, and I was getting nowhere. Some didn't have properties available at all. Others were still really expensive or already rented out. I kept going from village to village, looking for the perfect house with no luck. Maybe the empire wasn't the place for me. It was time to look through other lands. First, Batania. walked the roads, met their people, but unfortunately, no properties were available. No one was selling. The empire was destroying a village nearby. It was horrible to watch. I was glad to be away from such carnage. Poor people. I worked in one of their villages, learned more about their culture, but again, no properties in sight. Vlandia was next, and finally, I found it. house with a farm, 
at a good price. Still, I didn't have enough to afford it. I had to get to work. Going through the different towns of Vlandia, I bought and sold a wide variety of goods. Had some close call with the looters, but with each step, I was getting closer to my goal. I even got more horses to increase my carrying capacity and get more profit. I was getting greedy and that was my mistake. Buying so much of the same product increased its buying price and selling so much made me lose money. On top of this, having so many horses alone made me slower. No matter, I kept pushing forward, one trip after the other, till I finally got the money and bought my own house. Now, it was time to make this a home. For that, I needed furniture. I could buy some or make it myself, but to do that, I needed a workbench. It was time to go shopping. I couldn't afford to buy the workbench for now, so I got a bed, a table and a chair to begin with. I also bought a pitchfork and some seeds to begin working on my farm. It was time to go home. Once I was safe, I started to get to work. My next objective was to save up enough money to buy a workbench and start making the rest of the furniture myself. On my way to selling more goods, some bandits caught up to me. Still right there. This is a robbery. Thankfully, this time I had enough money to buy them off and continue my trip. Unfortunately, this didn't happen once, but twice. Well, dear traveler, we've just made landfall in these lands, hoping for a bit of luck with the raiding and pillaging. And aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Thanks to my trading and charisma skills, I was able once again to pay for my freedom. I ended up selling one of the mules to travel more swiftly. The carrying capacity wasn't worth the risk. After selling some more products, I stumbled upon a mine. To enter, I had to pay 600 coins for a permit. I went to the shops to buy a pickaxe and returned to the entrance. To my surprise, when I tried to buy access to the mine, I couldn't. It said it was collapsed and I wasn't able to get inside. I have to try again later. After a few days, the mine was clear. By paying around 900 coins, I'd have access to it for 5 consecutive days. It was time to get inside. The cavern split into different pathways. It was difficult to distinguish where the iron ore was. But I continued looking around the place. There was a waterfall and a river too. 
I mined as much as I could. And sold everything at one of the nearby towns. It wasn't much, but it was honest work. I went back to the mine to check if there were new ores. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I even waited for a few days by doing some jobs nearby, but they didn't respawn. I mined the rest of the place and sold everything at the shops. Finally, got the workbench and the saddle for my horse. Back at my place, I set it all up and looked at all the available options to craft. Also, my crops were all ready to harvest. Things were looking bright. And this was just the beginning. This mod has a lot of different systems to play around. One of them lets you rent properties to other people and have a passive income. And that's exactly my next objective. To do that, I needed to find someone and make them my companion. Not only that, but the house would need to have specific furniture to accommodate them. First, I talked with the barkeeper at one of the taverns and asked him for information. They told me about someone who was good at trading and was heading to a town nearby called Prevent. I made my way there. She was a spice vendor Call Amata. I? I don't think I know you. Peace to you, stranger. She asked for money to join me. I couldn't rent her my property otherwise. First, I got to work on the missing furniture to accommodate her. I bought a furnace and rearranged the whole house. With this, I'd be able to cook a wide variety of food. Next was some decoration and an additional chair. After getting some more money, I hired Mata as my companion It's been a while. and came to an agreement to rent her my property. Finally, I had a tenant and passive income, although it wasn't much better than nothing. The next thing in line was having a place to train my horses, see them grow. For that, I needed much more money. I had to find a way, diversify, seek more business opportunities, and one of them was smithing. I had zero knowledge as a blacksmith. I never tried it before. It wouldn't be easy, but if I managed to learn, the rewards could be immense. Being a blacksmith, you have total freedom to choose each and every part of what you craft, from what handle, pommel, and blade you use, to the specific size of each of them, all contributing to the overall crafting difficulty of the weapon. Then there's the materials. To begin, I need to get hard wood to refine into charcoal, which I'd use to process an iron ore. I went through the different markets looking for the necessary materials, and got to work on my first blade. Quality wasn't good, it was dull. I'm pretty sure I spent more money than what I got back. That's why I needed to increase my smithing skill if I wanted to generate an actual income. Smithing not only wasn't free, but it also took a toll on my body. My stamina was limited, and I needed to rest after a long day of work. Let the mind breathe. After a good night's sleep, I bought some weapons to smelt. That would give me experience and materials. I spent a couple of days trading to have enough money for more resources and also looked around for more hard wood, which I got at Ox Hall, bought every single unit available. By refining charcoal, I leveled up quite a few levels of smithing, which left me exhausted. I made my second sword, and this time it was much better. No longer dull. It wasn't much, but it was progress, and the price was better. Although, instead of selling it, I smelt it to obtain material back from it, and also learn new recipes for new parts. That way, I could make more valuable weapons. By refining materials one after the other, I reached level 25 in smithing, obtaining my first perk, which let me obtain 3 units of charcoal instead of only 2 per hardwood. With new parts at my disposal, I had to compare which ones were better, especially the blades. They made the biggest difference in price, which was directly correlated with how much experience I earned. I kept buying more weapons to smelt getting material, experience, and recipes. I sold a couple of my creations to not go bankrupt, and continued crafting and smelting, gathering new parts to choose from and new blades. 
The first few new recipes for blades that I got were not good. Prices were pretty much the same, if not worse. That was until I got access to the tier 2 blades. They ask for more materials and require more skill to be able to make them at a good quality. I gave it a shot anyway. My first try was rusty, but I was gaining a lot of new parts at the same time. I tried again and again, making dull weapons and learning more recipes, one after the other, rusty swords, until I finally managed to craft a good one. A flat ridge spatha blade, selling for more than double than before. I was actually beginning to make a profit, but this was just the beginning. I reached level 50 in smithing, gaining a new perk that granted me a 100% chance of learning new part designs. I went blade by blade, testing and comparing one after the other, day after day, failing, making dull weapons, learning, checking their prices, seeing which ones were worth it, some were worse. Others were almost the same, but then I found better. 4,000 coins for a single weapon. That was a hundred times more than what I would gain by working a full day at the village. I kept leveling up my skills, unlocking new recipes and trying new blades. got access to tier 3 parts, but they require a hundred points and needed steel to craft them, which couldn't be bought at the market, unless I found the right weapons to smelt. Blades that granted steel at a good price were sold at the Empire Towns. Before making my way there, I made some money making more tier 2 weapons. Finally, I got to one of the towns and made my purchase. Well now, stranger, peace to you. What is your name? Now I had a place to take care of my horses, train them and watch them grow. But to do so, I would need to buy a horse feeder and a training station. On top of this, I'd have to hire employees to look after them, feed them and defend them of raids. Having all set up, my next objective was to get a new business up and running, my own tavern. It would provide me with more passive income, but to reach that goal, I would have to make quite a bit of cash. It would be the most expensive property, so I got to it. Refining materials, smelting, and working. Getting a new perk once again. Blade after blade. In just a few days, I managed to get 17,000 coins. Now, I needed to find an available tavern to buy. I asked some people, but there was nothing in Blandia. I needed to go to the Empire. Finally, I arrived at Ortizia. By talking with the right people, I got the different locations where I could look for taverns to buy. One of them was Jal Maris. So, I finally owned my own tavern. But this was just the beginning. I had to grow this place into one of the finest in the whole empire, going from the bottom all the way to the top. The income wasn't great, but it would improve. I made the preparations for the first upgrade. It would take four days of hard work. 
Meanwhile, I looked around the Imperial markets for weapons that I could smelt for steel. That way, I could attempt to craft tier 3 blades. Thing is, my skill wasn't high enough. So, I kept creating the weapons that I already was proficient with, honing my skill, smelting some of my creations and selling others, increasing my abilities. After a few days, the first renovation was complete. The earnings were slowly but surely increasing. You could see how the place was changing and I wanted more. After getting some more money from blacksmithing, I began the next renovations, taking six days this time. Finally, I had upgraded the tavern to the max. I walked through the place contemplating what I had accomplished and what I had become from the bottom with hard and honest work. And this was not the end of it, nothing far from the truth. This was a new chapter, path ahead was exciting, with much more to discover, a whole new life. Don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get huge bonuses and participate for a chance to win a gaming console and more. Thank you for watching all the way through and thank you to everyone who joins as a member and donates to the channel. Hope to see you again.